Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is module number 6 and uh, in this module we will be talking on sodium ion rechargeable batteries. So far we have only talked about lithium ion batteries, but this is a new chemistry and this is lecture number 26 where we will be talking about the positive electrodes which includes layered oxide, polyanionic compound which includes phosphates, sulphates, etcetera and also organic compound. Now, uh, this is interesting that uh, instead of uh, lithium ion batteries, now people are also working on sodium ion batteries as well and this is uh, uh, to my knowledge is the only company Faradian, UK based company and uh, they are now using sodium ion battery for small cars even. So, I would like you to go through their website for further details, although you will not get much uh, as far as the technical uh, properties of these uh, batteries or the chemistries are concerned, but what for they are planned to be used that those kind of idea we will be getting. So, I will talk about why suddenly sodium ion rechargeable cell, uh, we are moving away from lithium ion batteries, then what are their characteristics and then different types of uh, positive electrode materials. You can see a layered cathode, polyanionic compound, uh, then sodium iron uh, phosphate, then fluorophosphate cathode, metal sulphate cathode. Nasikan structure already I have introduced um, in part of my other lecture, Prussian blue analog and organic cathodes, a whole lot of material people are studying, uh, so that uh, the best fitted one that uh, will be commercially uh, used. So, if you talk about the sodium ion battery um, as compared to lithium rechargeable batteries. Uh, one thing is quite clear that lithium ion battery is a well accepted power source for a variety of not only consumer electronic applications, but also uh, they are uh, predicted power source for electric vehicles. In certain electric vehicles already people have started to use it, but the raw material if you see that lithium uh, they are not abundant, they are not abundant in the earth crust and very limited uh, amount is available about 20 ppm uh, in the earth crust you will find lithium. Sodium on the other hand that is uh, most attractive in some sense that it is abundantly available and it is much much cheaper than sodium uh, than lithium. So, sodium um, precursor materials are abundant and you can compare their ppm level which is way ahead than 20 ppm um, and it is also inexpensive. So, if you have a brief comparison between this two, this lithium ion and sodium ion, uh, atomic mass certainly it is heavier. So, the batteries will have high uh, energy density in case of lithium ion battery, but sodium ion battery will have lower energy density because of their weight. Ionic radius is much larger as compared to lithium in terms of angstrom you can see. Uh, the standard electrode reduction potential uh, this is also a bit lower minus 2.71 volt as compared to 3.04 volt when uh, lithium is measured as compared to standard hydrogen electrode. Melting point this is also lower that is another disadvantage uh, that uh, sodium is having lower melting point than lithium. Theoretical capacity also much lower and I guess you will be able to estimate the theoretical capacity of sodium and compare it with lithium from the Faraday law which I taught earlier. And coordination preference uh, both are um, octahedral and in case of lithium it prefers to stay in tetrahedral site and uh, this uh, actually stays in a prismatic site. So, that we will be talking about. 
Now, if you look at the characteristics of these two batteries, the structure, component, system and charge storage mechanism of sodium ion batteries are more or less similar to that of lithium ion battery. The same kind of processing that is adopted and I have talked about the cell fabrication. So, the same equipment that you will be able to use unlike lead acid battery. So, the change in the chemis chemistry from lithium to sodium it is not of a much concern, but as I said it is heavier than lithium. Uh, now, the theoretical capacity um, becomes smaller in lithium cobalt oxide and similar structure which is sodium cobalt oxide. So, when one electron redox of the cobalt ion from plus 3 to plus 4 state is assumed to occur, the theoretical capacity if you assume all the lithium can be taken out from lithium cobalt oxide, it is 274 in case of LiCO2, but in case of sodium cobalt oxide it is 235. So, the crystal structure is more or less same, it composed a sheets of eight shared transition metal octahedron, operating voltage of lithium cobalt oxide at the end of the discharge or start of the charge that is more than 1 volt as you can see here. So, you are charging it. So, this is the charging voltage then you start to discharge and discharge ends here. Similarly, sodium you can see several steps are there because of the chemistry and then when you discharge it then this difference is quite large. So, assume that uh, you are using about 100 milliampere hour per gram. Uh, this uh, actually this should be uh, milliampere per gram. So, this is the rate this hour will not be there. The voltage difference is decreased to 0.4 because that is from the standard reduction potential you see that this difference is there. So, this is coming up. So, in the charge state this voltage difference is not that much and there is something to do with the structure of this layered uh, type of cathode material and the voltage difference that becomes more significant as sodium content in the structure is increases that means it is in the discharge state you can see that the difference is more. So, the available energy density is relatively lower because you know that the voltage along with the capacity that will give you the energy. So, energy will be lower in case of sodium system. Um, as compared to lithium uh, ion battery systems. So, like your sodium like your lithium ion batteries, sodium ion batteries also uh, have this kind of layered cathode. So, one of the example is um, uh, sodium transition metal oxide T stands for that uh, O2. So, this is a typical layer structure as you can see ABC ABC kind of uh, stacking. Uh, that is there. So, it consists uh, this transition metal octahedra here that contains um, the sodium containing polyhedra in between these layers. So, this, this is also in a polyhedral form. So, in this particular case it is in the octahedral type of polyhedra it is assuming the sodium and depending on the type of this sodium and polyhedra the layered cathode uh, we term as O3 type which is octahedral. Also sometimes it is P2 type which is prismatic and when you take out the sodium from the structure then like your lithium ion battery there is also structural phase transition takes place from O3 to P3 to several other structure it can form. So, this O3 type in a TO2 that consists cubic close pack oxygen array in which sodium and this 3D transition metal ion are accommodated at a distinct octahedral site as you can see here both are in octahedral coordination. 
there is a significant difference of the radius of sodium ion 1.02 angstrom and 3 d transition metal ions in trivalent state it is less than 0.7 angstrom. So, there is a size difference between sodium site in this octahedral and transition metal which stays in other type of octahedral in the transition metal layer. So, this NaO 6 and TO 6 this octahedra are edge shared into alternate layers perpendicular to 111 plane that you cannot visible it is not visible here along with the 111 plane, but if you can draw uh, this crystal structure based on its space group using a program like VESTA. Uh, if I find time I will introduce the VESTA program, so that any space group for any crystal structure if it is known to you, you can have a look of the crystal structure and at different direction how it looks like it will be easily visible to you. So, that is a wonderful program, I will try to part of it to introduce um, somewhere in this lectures. So, as a layered structure this NaTO2 that composed of crystallographically three different TO2 type layers, one constant uh, AB or CA or BC types of layer and that basically describes the unit cell and sodium ions they are accommodated at the octahedral site that is in between this TO2 layer as we have shown in this schematic. Now, this uh, P2 type uh, structure of the layered material that also consists of two TO2 layers, one is AB and then BA, AB and BA type and sodium ions are accommodated in a prismatic site between TO2 layer. So, in between this it is not octahedral, but prismatic uh, layer. Now, usually this O3 type oxides are sodium stoichiometric whereas, when it is prismatic type then it is sodium deficient oxide because of the structural consideration. So, the nature of the transition metal cation which stays here in this layers composition and layer type O p etcetera I mean this kind of configurations are there that decides the nominal voltage that we will have and as well as the capacity of the resultant cathode. Usually these cathodes are prone to capacitive padding. The reason you may be able to uh, appreciate now, first is this irreversible structural change during cycling O 3 to P 2 or P 2 to O 2 type phase transition. Another one is the migration of the transition metal cation into the sodium layer that also you can estimate from crystal field stabilization energy concept which I taught earlier followed by octahedral state stabilization energy. So, you will be seeing that uh, in the sodium layer transition metal cation disorder cannot be avoidable and that leads to capacity fading dissolution of certain transition metal cations into the electrolyte that is another uh, thing that is happening and you are losing your active material and that will lead to capacitive fading. Nature of transition metal cation if you use nickel which needs higher cut up voltage because the oxidation potential is higher as compared to cobalt and as compared to manganese which are basically used as transition metal cation that can lead to the electrolyte decomposition and formation of the secondary electrolyte interface not on the uh, negative electrode, but on the positive electrode. And you know that this kind of VCI usually dissolves in the electrolyte and that creates problem leads to capacitive fading. Redox reaction leads to irreversible oxygen evolution that is another problem in lithium cobalt oxide also you have seen that oxygen comes out when the charging voltage is higher and oxygen vacancy that is introduced in the material in order to uh, maintain the charge balance and as a result cyclability is deteriorated. So, this is the type of structure that we are talking about. 
So, you can see now this octahedral site, you can see the prismatic site and that is the stacking sequence for O 3, for P 3, for O 2 and P 2 type. And depending on the type of the layer structure and depending on the type of transition metal cation, this kind of phase transition from one phase to another, which is a slight change in their octahedral configuration and layered structured configuration that can deteriorate the electrochemical properties. With respect to this layered type of uh, cathode material, polyanion compound uh, like uh, your lithium iron phosphate, there is this is sodium iron phosphate, something similar to this, people are only picking up those material. So, among all types of cathodes, this polyanion material, uh, it could be phosphate, it could be sulphate, it could be silicate, uh, they are uh, reported uh, to be sodium uh, cathode candidate and mainly that is due to their higher operating voltage, higher power, you can drain more power out of it and of course, the structural stability which be much better than this simple layered structure. Sodium counterpart of lithium phosphate, this is a commercial cathode for lithium battery, you have seen it. Um, sodium iron phosphate, this has been studied extensively. It basically crystallizes into a stable state, we call it maricite type of structure. But there is a large barrier of sodium migration, so sodium cannot be extracted from this structure that easily. So, this is not very suitable, the sodium iron phosphate unlike lithium iron phosphate is not very suitable cathode material. As compared to that, if you take a metastable triphyllite type sodium iron phosphate, this is quite stable at this temperature, less than this temperature. And this is basically prepared by sodium ion exchange in lithium iron phosphate. So, lithium that you can do electrochemically. Electrochemically, you can do that, you have already seen it, you take a Nasicon structure, put lithium salt, extract the sodium first and there are plenty of lithium, sodium is lost somewhere inside the system and it is lithium that we intercalate. So, something similar can be done, so from uh, lithium iron phosphate, this kind of structure you can make and this crystal structures of this type of polymorph they consist slightly distorted of this FeO 6 octahedra that you can see and PO 4 tetrahedra. So, this octahedra and tetrahedra they are slightly distorted. So, it involves the corner sharing of FeO 6 octahedra uh, with edge sharing between neighboring FeO 6 and PO 4. So, structurally it is something like that. So, that a one dimensional, one channel for lithium ion diffusing uh, direction that is expedite. So, what you are doing? The same structure which is stable structure, which is thermodynamically stable, you are slightly distorting it just to uh, make sure that the sodium ion are properly you can take out and put it back. Na2FeP2O7 that is another crystal structure and uh, uh, please go through this structure and correlate it with the schematic that uh, we have shown. And if you have access to this program called VESTA and you know their uh, space group, uh, then uh, you can actually construct this kind of structure and uh, you can rotate it along with A axis, B axis or A B plane, you can rotate that and clearly you can see what are the channels available for the sodium to move. So, two dimensionally it is very difficult to make you understand that what exactly is going on, but uh, uh, from the text you will get the idea that uh, it contains uh, corner shared FeO 6. So, this FeO 6 is corner shared octahedral which are connected to this P 207 unit and that forms a 3D framework structure with an open sodium ion diffusion path. So, these are the small yellow spheres of the sodium. So, it has a clear cut channel for the sodium ion diffusion. So, one sodium ion reversibly you can extract, not both of it. Uh, 
because this is limited by this redox if e 2 plus to 3 plus and it delivers reversibly about 90 milli ampere hour per gram. I will expect that you can calculate the theoretical capacity from its molecular weight. It is one electron exchange and from Faraday law you can actually get these values. Now, the presence of an open diffusion path formed by the pyrophosphate ions enable easy sodium ion migration and improve its rate performance. The voltage is in about 3 volt range that also you can calculate from the free energy composition diagram you can estimate that what will be the open circuit voltage under equilibrium condition. Fluorophosphate is another cathode that is being talked about. The layered mixed ion anion system contains fluoride and phosphate ions that are widely examined as positive electrodes for SIB. A lot of papers have been published. This layered fluorinated iron phosphate that contains sodium ion accommodated between FePO4F layers. So, this unit FePO4F layers in which this FeO4F2, so octahedra is there, they are edge shared, they share both edge and corners and sodium ion migrates between this layer FePO4F with two dimensional path. So, this is the sodium layer two dimensional path you can extract it without disturbing much the structure. The crystal structure of this when you uh, replace iron with manganese is uh, different from this one. So, this is manganese containing one. So, here all MnO4 F2 octahedra share each corner and form a 1 D type, 1 D type uh, Mn2 Fe2 O8 chains and these chains are connected by PO4 uh, tetrahedra uh, which are corner shared. This actually form a less dense 3 D uh, framework structure. So, this also can be used as positive electrode material. Then let us talk about metal sulphate cathodes and this is a very recent type of work. Uh, alu odite type Fe based sulphate sodium 2 Fe 2 SO 4 hole 3 that exhibits a reversible capacity about 100 milli ampere hour per gram with the highest operating voltage is quite large here 3.8 volt versus sodium. So, here this Fe ion that occupies two kind of crystallographic sites that have different types of octahedral geometry. So, Fe O 6 octahedra share an edge with the crystallographical equivalent octahedra which is Fe 2 O 10 type of dimers and the sulphate ions they interconnect this dimer. So, that it is built a three dimensional framework structure. The voltage is pretty large 3.8 volt and you get a theoretical capacity about 100 milli ampere hour per gram. This already I have talked about sodium super ionic conductor Nasikan type of structure, sodium vanadium phosphate is one of them and uh, this structure you remember the lantern type of structure we talked about a corner shared V O 6 and P O 4 tetrahedra. This units form a three dimensional manner to form this so called V 2 P 3 O 12 uh, kind of uh, uh, formulation. And this structure is a large tunnel of rhombohedral interstitial sites, which can be fully or partially housed sodium ion by a perturbation free lattice insertion extraction process. But not all the sodium can be taken out. Approximately 2 moles of sodium ion can be extracted. One is very stubborn, it will not come out during charging. So, that uh, is due to the change in the redox of vanadium from plus 3 to plus 4 and it yields a very flat voltage around 3.3 volt and uh, one mole of sodium can also be inserted into this structure at relatively lower voltage about 1.5. Then the structure uh, changes to Na 4 instead of Na 3. So, one more sodium you can insert it. 
and this reaction as you can see is at lower voltage. So, this part can also be used as negative electrode material. So, 1.5 and 3.3, so you can get around a 2 volt battery. So, uh, you can construct a symmetric uh, NVP cell and one acts as anode, another acts as a positive electrode. Prussian blue analogs, um, that cathode also is very easy to make and this basically represents a array of metal hexacyanoferrate. This is having a perovskite structure with face centered cubic uh, lattice. Chemical composition of PBA you can express like this. So, uh, Z molecule of water is also embedded here and A denotes this alkali metal, it could be lithium, it could be sodium uh, and M that represents a transition metal ions and it could be iron, manganese, cobalt, uh, copper etcetera. And the range of uh, the sodium is uh, between 0 to 2 and range of this is from 0 to 1. So, in the cubic lattice with M 2 plus ions, they are having a 6 fold coordinated to the nitrogen atom of this cyanide ligands and F E 2 plus that is octahedrally neighbored. I will show you the structure in the next slide with the carbon atom of this uh, cyanide ligand. So, this also forms a 3D rigid framework structure containing some open channel uh, for uh, that gives you a uh, spacious interstitial space. So, this uh, large interstitial A site uh, which is about 4.6 angstrom in diameter and spacious channel, uh, it uh, measures about 3.2 angstrom. Uh, if you look at 100 direction, that allows a reversible accommodation and facile transport of sodium ions. So, this compound uh, contains two different redox axis center, one is uh, this M cation and iron. So, both are possible. So, which can undergo a complete electrochemical redox reaction. So, this metal could be iron, metal you can replace part of it with cobalt. Uh, so, this can be replaced. So, two different types of transition metal cation you can use. So, what you are doing a two electron transfer uh, process is possible and two sodium insertion and reaction extraction process can be operative. So, this F E element in this Prussian, blo uh, Prussian blue analog, this can be partially or completely substituted as I said by many redox active transition metal cations without damaging the crystal structure. So, this could be uh, another good material which is very easy to synthesize, but there is a problem. They have very potential advantage, but this cathodes they usually do not yield satisfactory performance due to the structural irregularity in the Prussian blue analog lattice. So, usually we prepare it, we have prepared it in our laboratory by wet chemical synthesis and that leads to this hydrated PBA lattice. So, two molecular uh, water is uh, embedded in the structure. And that leads to lot of Fe CN6 vacancy. So, you can see here, um, here uh, as compared to this one, uh, when it is a defective structure, lot of vacancies are there and lot of dangling bonds you can see. All the cations are marked here. Uh, sodium is the bigger one, then transition metal cation is also there, iron is there, uh, the cyanide carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, so, they are all marked in this type of defect structure. So, this vacancy um, introduce more water into this uh, Prussian blue framework to coordinate the dangling M bond because now M bond is uh, actually dangling. So, water is adsorbed here. Uh, 
this actually decrease the available site for this sodium ion to host because this is replaced by the water molecule. So, this crystal water is a problem they have a strong tendency to reside or to compete with this sodium. So, they are enemy to this sodium ions to occupy this interstitial space. Now, this randomly distributed FECN6 vacancy that could break down the bridge connection of Fe cyanide and metal cation framework to form a distorted and defective lattice which can collapse during cycling. So, this is one of the major problem for Prussian blue analog to be used as positive material. There are certain organic cathode, they are basically redox active polymers. This also could be a good choice for electroactive materials for sodium and batteries because mainly of their structural diversity and they are also sustainable. Of course, they are having low cost environmental friendly, it is a flexible framework. So, you can make in future flexible batteries as well and it can accommodate lot of sodium ions reversibly without much special hindrance like the crystalline material. So, this is uh, one example uh, which is polytriphenylamine that has been explored as sodium ion cathode. One can get a specific capacity about 96 milliampere hour per gram. It is a descent discharge capacity that you will get um, and uh, of course, it can also perform at 20 C rate. So, 20 C rate uh, you can see it gives 88 milliampere hour per gram and uh, this is the structural um, part of this particular polymer. So, here electrolyte uh, participates in the battery reaction and consumes uh, the electrolyte. So, each of this uh, so called PTPAN unit combines with uh, the salt anion LIP sodium uh, PF6, uh, it is uh, combining with that and that creates some problem as far as the cyclability is concerned because your electrolyte concentration is progressively reducing. So, uh, basically the study material for uh, this sodium ion battery you will not find uh, in a standard textbook because this is relatively new type of technology. So, you will have to actually um, depend on uh, various review articles and recently we have uh, uh, written a review article on the electrode materials which not only consist of uh, the anode uh, cathode material, but also consist of the anode materials. Uh, uh, this is uh, the book is oxide electronics uh, by Willey. Uh, so, this publisher's name I forgot to write it is John Willey is the publishers. So, that is the study material and apart from this, uh, this also you can consider uh, which is also another review article in uh, this journal and uh, for Prussian blue the vacancy the defect site one this is a uh, reasonably good uh, article that you can consider. So, you will have to read for further details about the structure about their properties you will have to go through this literature carefully. So, we have learned that sodium ion cell mechanism is very similar to lithium ions. Characteristics of sodium ion cell is compared with uh, lithium ion cells as far as the voltage during charge and discharge, fully charged condition, fully discharged condition that has been compared for a particular type of lithium ion based cathode and sodium ion based cathode. And we have introduced uh, uh, all types of uh, positive electrode material, they are being now actively studied. Uh, layered cathode, which has been extensively studied till date, polyanionic compounds, um, this also few literatures are there. This is relatively new material, fluorophosphate is a new material, metal sulphate cathodes has not yet been uh, um, researched that rigorously. Nasigan structure is of our choice. We are doing lot of work involving Nasigan type of structure, not only for sodium ion battery, but I have shown you that this material also 
you can utilize for lithium ion intercalation. So, for dual ion batteries, this is a very, very good material. Prussian blue analog, personally, I see a lot of uh, uh, if you can control the structure well, uh, if you are a good chemist, then uh, it is so simple to make and cost effective. So, there is a good prospect of Prussian blue analog and organic cathode they are coming up, uh, very few uh, reports are there. So, that also I have introduced. Thank you for your interest.